We're going to cover the use of the State and Local Emissions Inventory System, also known as SLICE, which is the submittal system for point source emissions inventory data. You can access it here at slice.deq.utah.gov. In order to acquire a user account, here on the home page, you'll download this SLICE electronic user registration form. Once you have your account, to log in, you'll click here in the upper right hand corner of the screen on login, then enter your email and password. If you've forgotten your password, click this forgot password link here. Here you can see the facilities attached to this account. We'll mostly be working with this company. If you as a user only submit facility inventory data for one facility, you'll only see that facility. I'm going to press this button under Actions to look at all the reports for this facility. If the report for this facility had not been started, I'd press a button under Actions to start the report. If the report is already in process, click on this button under Actions. Now that I've opened the report, we can see the dashboard with boxes for facility, release points, control devices, emission units, unit processes, process emissions, and report attachments. In this video, we'll focus on the facility box. Please view the other training videos for content on the other boxes. In this facility box, the tabs are facility, contacts, addresses, location, and additional information. Facility users should review the information in all of these tabs to make sure it is correct. In the first tab, we have facility identifier, facility name, description, operating status, NAICS, and any comments. In the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see an edit button. Only some items are editable for facility users, usually because of a change in one of those fields would require a change to your air quality permit first. Here in the contacts tab, we're looking for the best contact person for emissions inventory. In this tab, you can add additional points of contact, like a secondary phone number or an email, but we're just looking for a single contact. The next tab includes both a mailing address and a physical address. Then the location tab has the specific latitude and longitude of the site. The last tab, additional information, has a customer ID and an owner name, which are only editable by agency staff. If you do see an error in one of these fields that are not editable by facility users, please email slice at utah.gov. Let's do some editing so that we can see how Slice points out an error. Here, I'll edit this phone number. As you can see, I'm changing the formatting of the phone number, and when I try to save, Slice will tell me that there's an error by putting this yellow triangle on any tab with the error and also displaying this red banner across the top of my screen. Then, the red text in that tab where the error is should indicate specifically what is wrong. Once I fix that error and save the information again, Slice will display a blue banner up here to tell me the information was successfully updated. In this example, the blue banner does not appear because there is still an error in the addresses tab. Those are the basics of how to access Slice and the facility information we'll need. Please check out the other videos for more information on each of these other boxes and the actual calculation and submission processes.